Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mac Shoots Film. Okay, today we're going to talk about my 2020 gear list. So, you know, as people are starting to make New Year's resolutions and make project plans for the new year from a photography standpoint, I also want to catalog where I'm at with my gear and talk about what, um, what are the reasons behind where I'm going to start 2020. And then it'll be really cool at the end of 2020 to see why, what gear I chose, why I said I chose it, and did I really stick with it, or you know how did it evolve? So I thought this would be a cool way to like journal my current gear situation, and I was like, I might as well record it. So come along with me. Let's review my gear, and uh, yeah, let's just nerd out. All right. All right, so we're gonna break this down into categories. I've got the iPad out because I took down a bunch of notes. Want to make sure I get it right with as few takes as possible because I am the shoot at 55 time king for some reason. No clue why. All right, so let's talk about where we're at. It is December 31st, 2019. Tomorrow is the first day of 2020, a new decade. And I've been in film photography for a few years. And over 2019, my camera collection ramped up unacceptably high. I mean, I was up maybe to 20 cameras, and I know some people are like, oh, I got a whole closet full. Well, for me, that was a lot. And then in the past three months, I pared down to, I don't know, maybe six or seven cameras, and that's been tough. Um, but I, I wanted to pare down to cameras that I absolutely had a job for each one of them. And that's where I'm at with this. And we'll go over bags and what film stocks I'm going to go through as well. So let's just jump right into it with cameras. What cameras will I be using in 2020 and why? All right, so let's just start with the, the first one. It's my most rec recent acquisition. It is a Leica M4P. And I bought a Voigtlander Scopar F2.5 uh, screw mount lens, but I have the M mount adapter for it. And that, like I said, that's an F2.5. It is a meterless version, so I use the Voigtlander VC Meter 2. Oh, and by the way, everything that we talk about, I'll try to have links to it down below. So if you want to go check it out, do your own research, you absolutely can. And we'll talk about this. So what job will this Leica have in 2020 other than having a red dot on it? Okay, it, it's going to be put to work. I've already ran about 10 rolls to it, and I've had it maybe a month. Um, and I've been shooting all my other cameras as well and had quite a few shoots. So that's a lot for one camera that's not a primary use camera. 2020, I'm definitely going to pick up street photography more and more. I'm going to try to shoot street photography at least one or two days per month, minimum one day per month in 2020. Um, I bet you I shot it three times in 2019. And the reason I like this is for multiple reasons. One, uh, I don't ever have to look to the viewfinder to use this Leica for street photography. Up top, uh, I can set, hey, here's my f-stop hit the orange button, it'll tell me, you know, turn the shutter speed dial to where it, it turns the light green. And then I can just dial it in right here. And still looking down with the camera right here, I can look down and you, you know, basically zone focus where I'll set to how many feet away the beginning of my subject is. And if I'm shooting at like F8, which I will be, um, F8 or F11, I, I'll know that I'll have a, a depth of field that's massive because odds are they'll be across the street. Anyway, really quick and intuitive for, from a street photography standpoint, I can look down on my controls. Um, it's really svelte. It's not as bulky. So I really like that. That's going to be my street photography camera. Okay, next. Nikon FM3A. I'll, I love this camera. What's unfortunate is I got like us just after I got this. But this is probably my favorite manual SLR ever for sure. Uh, I love the super fast shutter speed, four thousandth of a second. Um, the, the back button auto exposure lock, love that. And uh, it's just a well-built camera. So it will have a very specific job in 2020. And it seems like I'm relegating such a great camera to something um, less meaningful, but it's not really. This will be the camera that I throw in my bag when I travel, when I do stuff for life, right? This I'll record life with this camera. It, uh, it's a great camera. I have a couple lenses for it, a 28 f 2.8. This is a 35 millimeter f 1.4, so I can shoot portraits with this. And I have the 50 millimeter 
f 1.2 ais lens and then also i have for like longer longer range stuff this beer can 70 to 210 i really love uh longer lenses for landscapes a lot of people always want to go wide but when i was living in colorado and arizona you know i had a ton of experience being out in like really amazing vistas and just being the the lens i have being too wide so you couldn't really get a ton of detail of like in, interesting subjects something like a 70 to 210 i can stay pretty far back 70 mountain's not going to be around top of me but if i really want to focus on a peak where the sun's setting and just illuminating one of those peaks zoom that bad boy in there you go this lens was like 65 bucks so Lots of good Nikon glass. Always a good reason to keep the Nikon around. All right, moving through it. Nikon F100. This guy's going to have one job and one job only. Portrait sessions. When I do a portrait session, it will have an 85 1.8D on it, a 50 millimeter F14 D on it, or a soon to be acquired 35 F14 G lens. Um, I've tried to shoot manual SLRs during portrait sessions, and I'm always displeased with how it really disrupts my creative flow, like to manually set exposure, to man manually focus. Uh, I'm trying to like run into a chain of compositions as seamlessly as possible. And I need as few distractions as possible. And that's just me personally. Some people be like, oh, you can't manual focus fast, you're not a man. Maybe not guys, maybe not. But what I'm saying is this, this camera is amazing. Matrix metering is awesome, but I use it in spot metering and the spot metering on here is, is, is the best I've ever used for sure. And fast autofocus, pretty reliable, rarely ever misses focus. When I'm shooting a portrait session, I'm gonna respect your time and I'm gonna focus as fast as possible, advance film as fast as po possible, rewind film as fast as possible. The F100 does that, don't have to worry about the camera. So, Moving on, 2020, I, the X-A2, I, I haven't posted a video about this camera and I've had this camera for about six or seven months. It is an absolutely amazing zone focus point and shoot camera. Uh, I'm working on a project right now, a, a zine that I'm going to make and it requires me to have a small inconspicuous camera and I'm doing it on film. Of course, I use my iPhone, but I need something I can like rest on the arms of a shopping cart just like this. And I don't have to worry about focusing. Yet again, just like with the Leica, I can set the focus distance here and then I can take my shots. Uh, we'll talk about that project later, but the reason I'm keeping this X-A2, it has, like, and like I said, with all these cameras, all of them have a specific job. This one has a really important job and it's doing it well and I appreciate it. <sighs> okay, so a lot of 35 millimeter and you're probably like, this dude is a uh, portrait guy and he's shooting a lot of 35. I've, I really like the way 35 looks for portraits, but I do own a medium format. This guy will be, it will shadow the F100 on portrait sessions, but you know, the whole thing, I want to focus as fast as possible, advance film as fast as possible, rewind film as fast as possible. This will have a, a very small portion of the shot. It is auto advancing and auto rewind and it's a prism finder, but I'll, use that on a few portrait sessions just to get some uh, crazier depth of field, but I'll mainly use it for landscapes and larger scale projects. Besides the zine that I'm working on, I have a conceptual project I wanna do, and I think medium format's gonna suit that best because I'm gonna really wanna blow up those images when I'm done to gallery size. So, so from a camera standpoint, that's it. I'm just, a, just a, a couple of weeks ago, I was at 12 cameras and I'm gonna be down to five and every single one of them has a job. The Leica M4P for street, the Leica, I mean the Nikon FM3A for travel, Nikon F100 for portraits, XA2 for my uh, zine project, Mamma Mia for landscapes, supplement portraits, and some of my conceptual projects. So that's, uh, that's it, five cameras, but I am gonna try a new camera I haven't talked about yet. And it is, let's shoot some, some Super 8 guys, Super 8. So I'm excited about this. I have uh, a couple of projects in mind for this. I'm reaching out and collaborating, trying to collaborate now to make that happen. Soon though, that's gonna be exciting. Won't, won't ponder on lenses too much. I pretty much have all the glass that I want. I have a 35 Scopar on this Leica. I'm pretty sure I will buy a 50 millimeter F1.4 that I can occasionally shoot the portrait if somebody's close or on the street and they're down to have a portrait taken. 
Also, 50 is a little bit more range, so I don't have to get as close to my subject because I'm still uncomfortable and awkward shooting street. And then from a Nikon standpoint, I did mention for the F100, I'll buy the 35 f 14 g which besides the Nikon 85 14 g it's the best lens ever made out of all the lenses I've ever shot. The bokeh, bokeh is amazing. Um, and I just love the characteristics that are all baked in from that lens. So I'm excited to get that. And I think that's it for lenses. So bags, I'll tell you what, flip side 400 AW. I just, this, I just recently had to rebuy this bag. I had one that I bought in 2013 and it's traveled well over 200,000 miles. I mean, Iceland twice, uh, being outside and rain, sleet and snow every day there for 24 days. Uh, Mexico, Canada, 14 days through Utah, multiple trips through the uh, peaks and valleys of Colorado, all through the Southeast and it held up and I beat the shit out of it and I put a ton of stuff in it, no issues. So I, I rebought it, I love it so much. Zips on the back, uh, I can put a ton of stuff in here. And then this front will expand out a little bit. It's like a turtle shell once you have it fully packed, but it's comfortable, the shoulder, Shoulder straps are well padded, and I love the padded hip belt as well. So if you're doing some mountaineering, great pockets on the side for tripods, and I carry multiple, so love that. Uh, like I said, links down below for that. And then we've got, so if I'm gonna shoot around the city, like I did a, a photo shoot in Charlotte with the, with the model, uh, I love a shoulder strap bag, because odds are I'm gonna be carrying smaller cameras, smaller lenses. Uh, this is just an Amazon Basics bag. I had the low pro version of it and I lost it. And I went back on Amazon to find it. And then the suggested down below, it had an Amazon uh, Basics version for like $50 cheaper. And actually, <laughs> this is built way better than the low pro one is actually. Uh, it's more, I don't know, it has more innovations in it. It was $50 cheaper, but the, it's crazy durable. It's almost like formed uh, padding, but I, I love that it's super easy because when I'm in the street, I can just throw it over my shoulder and go and it's a light, easy bag. It's not the turtle shell that the 400 is. So that, that's it from my bag standpoint. Films, so I'm gonna be pretty boring with my film stocks. So I love Portra 800. I'll be shooting it in 120 and um, 35 millimeter, absolutely. I just love the way it renders color, specifically for portraits. It's a beautiful film. So I won't be giving up on that. One film that I'm gonna shoot a ton more of and I will start developing is Kodak E100. So I just bought a pro pack of the 120. So five rolls are coming in and I received from an amazing friend. I was actually winner of some contest, I don't know. But in that package that I received was five rolls of E100. Timing couldn't have been more perfect. Uh, I absolutely love the way this film looks it's just such an amazing film and to be slide film is have so much character it's ridiculous i love it i'm going to shoot the crap out of it and i'm going to home develop it and obviously you'll see a video on that black and white standpoint ilford hp5 i mean what else can i say about that i'll shoot that on street super versatile i'll post it at 3200 in 35 millimeter 6400 in 120 um of course you can push it more but that, that's all i'd be comfortable with super versatile Pretty flat, so I can take it where I want it and post if I need to. Uh, I'll use it a lot for street, but also for portraits. Another black and white that I'll throw in that I always have loved is XP2, which I haven't shot much of here recently and I really wish I had. Um, I'll, I'll throw that in the mix. But I'll experiment with other films, but for all my shoots, for the projects that I outlined for my five cameras, we will I will run through those three films pretty much all year through my five project cameras, uh, E100, Portra 800, and HP5. But there's a ton of other films I want to try, but for not for any of my serious project work. Okay, this has been a crazy long video of me just talking and, and not a lot of anything else. But I think you guys should do this too. Like list out your uh, cameras that you want to do stuff with in 2020 and why. Tuck it somewhere, take a picture of it so it's on your phone. And then December 31st of 2020, look back and uh, open your camera closet and, and see, did it change? Did you enhance it? What did you do? Uh, just a cool thing that you can do. So guys, I am gonna get ready. It's New Year's Eve. Um, I hope you guys are safe. When you see this, it will be tomorrow, New Year's Day. So happy first day of the 20s. Let's make them the roaring 20s. 
If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're into the content, click subscribe down below. There's a little bell beside it that you click that. It'll let you know when I've uploaded a, another video. Guys, I hope 2020 is full of health and happiness for all of you. I, I sincerely mean that. Let's make it an amazing year. All right, guys. See you.